Hey YouTube land, Tycanders again, welcome you once again to another action figure review and today I'm taking a look at the Alien vs Predator Requiem uh, Wolf Predator or Unmasked Wolf Predator from Haya Toys Now, before I get on to the figure we'll just have a quick look at the box as is standard practice when I have the boxes so if we can just kind of stand there we go um so the box that comes in is, is this window display box with the alien versus predator requiem logo down here image of the figure in the corner the company that makes them the 15 plus for the age category same thing on the side just the alien versus predator logo on the back of the box it shows the figure in a few different poses then it has a whole bunch of legal stuff and it's pretty much just alien versus predator requiem um logo repeated across the box so the box isn't too spectacular um it is a different i will say it is a different style of box to the others it's interesting that instead of wolf's mask that they show in the corner they actually show who i think it is scar predator uh i'm not too sure but it looks like the wrist gauntlet from scar it doesn't look like the bio hamlet for the other avp and it doesn't look like the one from the classic jungle hunter predator it looks more like the ones from the avp predators which if i remember correctly i think they reused some of the iconography from it because it was a sequel to that movie so we'll get the accessories out of the way first so as with nearly all uh higher toys figures it comes with a display base which is instead of being the standard mud one which the most of the predator figures came with which is all predators from the predator 2 wave jungle hunter even the predators figures came with this base they've actually opted to go with this metal plate base which is the one that the aliens figures tend to come with uh it has the same gimmick uh, you get these little H or I clips, whichever way you want to position them, and you click them in. So you just have to make sure it has the right clearance. And then when you have one of these bases, you can click it into the side here, and you can continue it on this way, or you can bring it down vertically, whichever way you want to do it. But you just have to maneuver the clips to match up with the, that of the base. So all in all it is pretty cool there is a different version of the bases that came with the robocop figures as well and they have like a more roadmap uh, side, uh sidewalk design to them and they also clip together with these so you can have the whole three different types of bases to connect together i'm just gonna move the old thing out of the way so the other accessory he comes with is an extended version of the predator spear now this is the exact same molding as the ones that come with the AVP Predators um, mainly because it's the same weaponry pretty much uh, It also comes with the throwing shuriken So these are different to the uh, to the smart discs These are shurikens They have like, they cl collapse in on themselves and then they have like blades that are similar to the Predators wrist gauntlets around them when they throw them the unique weapon to wolf that was sort of, uh, well there was a couple of unique weapons to wolf but some of them are non-removable on the figure uh, one of these is the whip now it is a shame that there's an extended version of this whip it's all it's curled up you can't unravel it now i know there is a masked version of wolf he may come with an extended version of this whip which i have, can't remember off the top of my head if he does or not but it would be cool if he does come with an extended version of this whip. Uh, I would also like to see him come with the um, the gun thing. So he has on his back um, the two plasma blasters. They do hinge down. And they hinge up and they rotate. In the movie, uh, the movie's been out quite a while now. So it's not really spoilers. In the movie, he loses one of these during a fight. And then he rebuilds it as a handheld cannon which is kind of cool 
or he loses he loses one in the fight and he takes the other one off and rebuilds it into a handheld cannon i can't remember if that's the way it works or if it was just the one that it was damaged he takes off and um i think one of them gets damaged and he takes it off and turns it into a handgun which is kind of cool something that you kind of hadn't seen before was new for this for this movie uh these things on his chest bandolier here are kind of like a laser wire trap that he sets up so again these weapons are non-removable uh what he did in the movie is he took them off threw them up in different locations in the sewer and when the aliens were attacking him uh when they went through the grid it sliced them up and stuff like that um i think he was also able to use them as like an explosive device um this little blue vial down here again non-removable it's same thing with the medic pack this big i think it was this one was the one that opens up and has a big huge medic kind of thing in it has all the things for making this blue vial which is basically a solvent uh for clearing up traces of alien or the xenomorphs so he uses this to dissolve stuff that he goes through in the movie and then as with nearly all the predators he comes with alternate hands so he has an outstretched hand and a kind of more relaxed grasping hand or not relaxed grasping hand but a relaxed hand the two hands he comes packaged are the ones that are on him currently which is the weapon holding hand so he can hold the uh the spear in one hand and you can hold the shuriken in the other so you can have him armed up with both he's a pretty cool figure um he does have a few issues that you need to kind of go through with some warm water when you first get him out of the packaging mostly the ankles here tend to be stuck so you need to manipulate them with a little bit of wash, wash, little bit of hot warm water, uh, not overly boiling or, or just pre-boiled. Kind of if you boil a kettle, leave it cool down for a bit, and then throw, put it into a cup or something. You can just dip his feet into it, and then, you know, adjust the the ankle articulation. But we'll run down to the rest of his articulation. So we just get his plasma casters out of the way they just fold up it's a shame that these don't kind of fold all the way up you just have to put them out of the way in the movie they kind of collapse down on each other uh there's like a hinge here so it hinges forward and just slides in but uh you just have to put these out of the way for now so his head is on a ball joint he does get a good range of movement on it uh one thing to be wary is with the necklace if you do what i just did you will move the necklace piece all the way around and it will get trapped behind his head so you just have to be careful of that and just squidge it back the way it should be there we go as i put my finger on it hopefully it won't move these dreadlocks are the kind of rubbery material so they do kind of move out of the way but they can get in the way of moving the head as well so just be wary of that the one thing i find interesting about his arms and i'm not sure if it's just because of the way the body is sculpted on this one now his arms do move up they don't tend to move down that much i mean when you have his arms down you can't really put them at his side they're always kind of splayed out like this which is kind of interesting and a bit of a shame you can't get a kind of more natural look to him now I'll show you what I mean if I bring in the this is the unmasked jungle hunter you see the arms kind of sit down a little bit better on this one uh they're not the best uh they still have that kind of slightly splayed out to the side but it's way more noticeable on wolf here so I'm not sure if that's just something with my particular figure or if it's the way all the figures are done it's as if the chest is just that little bit too wide to you know move the arm down into a more natural seated position or resting position but his arms do move up that much they do rotate all the way around there is a upper bicep swivel you just have to be a little bit careful with it when you first get it out of packaging there is an upper bicep swivel there is dual jointed elbow so there's a joint just here and then just at the bottom of the elbow and it gives you an extra bit of range of movement. 
The gauntlet is a separate piece. So if you were to pop the hand off, you would be able to slide the gauntlet off. I'm not going to do that now. These hand is on a ball joint, so it can rotate around and has a slight bit of hinging. The wrist blades, if I just move it into position, do extend in and out. Not hugely, uh, which is the case with most of the Predator figures. They don't extend super far out. Even with the Jungle Hunter ones, they don't tend to extend too much. Unlike the like the NECA stuff, the NECA ones tend to extend out of a good bit deal more than the Hyatoids ones. Which, uh, I'm not sure which ones are more accurate, but um, I don't mind them extending too or not extending too far. It's not a deal breaker. So the same thing with the computer wrist gauntlet. That is a separate piece as well, so that can be rotated around. And again, is on a rotate on a ball joint, so you can move that in and out. They are quite tiny pegs, so I do recommend heating these up before swapping out the hands, just in case you have any breakages. It's just something to be wary of. The waist has a side to side. It is hindered a bit by this back piece, so when you're trying to push it back, it will hit off the back of the butt. So just be wary of that. But it does have an upper bicep swivel and a lower bicep, or waist swivel. The lower waist swivel is a bit tight. You can hear it kind of crunching as I'm trying to move it, but it is there. Uh, legs can split out that much. They can kick forward about that much. Not a huge uh, kick forward, to be fair. Can't really move back. Does have double hinged knees. So you have that. And as showed earlier, you do have the ankle articulation now it's not a rocker joint so if you're putting it down it just hinges forward and back it doesn't rotate to the side to kind of you know give it more action posing or anything like that so just be wary of that head sculpt is quite nice the battle scarred eye and side of the face is pretty cool as well and as i said there is a masked version of this which will have the bio hamlet but the, for some reason the unmasked one got released first even though if I remember correctly, people were saying that the masked one should have been out by now. Well, at the time of this recording anyway, at least. But overall, detail-wise, figure sculpt, it is a very nicely done figure. You can't have him hold all his weaponry. So there is a clip here on the side of the belt for holding the uh, whip. And then you can give him his... Let me just scooch it back into his hand. So you can actually have him holding the spear, the whip, and the shuriken all at the same time. Um, it does look pretty cool, and you can get into some pretty good poses with him. As I said, the only downside I can see with really with this guy is the kind of that weird, uh, that kind of weird thing with the shoulders where it doesn't kind of, you know. They kind of splay out at the sides. They don't fit kind of perfectly. Maybe if the ball joint was out a little bit further on the shoulder, it would actually be able to swing back down a bit better on the show on the torso and give a more natural look. But it is what it is. So we're just going to stand them up here, and we'll bring in a couple of other predators and other action figures. So as I had them there earlier, here is the unmasked jungle hunter. I'm just getting to stand. I know these guys have issues with their standing, so we'll see if we can get these guys to stand. Some of them have like issues with the hinges on the feet where the paint will be stuck and you have to unstick it, and then sometimes it looks a bit awkward. There is the masked version of the Jungle Hunter. Now, these are the 2.0 versions, so the original ones were a lot more skinnier. In fact, I don't think I have one of the original versions nearby unfortunately i do not i thought i did but i don't so i'll just have to make do so we have captain eagle here who i still have yet to review i uh, have not gotten around to it we have the care daring figure from the jurassic world line and we'll bring in Owen grady or one of the many Owen grady's i have since they're one next yeah no, i thought that was going to happen uh one next to me. and i'll see if i can get something from the galaxy far far away which is bib fortuna 
he's a little tall for most figures, but he does work. And do I have anything else that I can bring in? Oh, yes, I have one of the Batman figures from the Spin Masters line. So we'll just move old Captain Eagle here. Hopefully he won't fall over, but clear over. Now we bring in one of the Batman from the Batman Spin Masters line. So there we go. There is a quick video review for the Wolf Unmasked Wolf Predator from Haya Toys. Uh, it is a really cool figure. Um, I have picked up the Alien Warrior from this line as well. They have, so far, there's only three figures that I can see of this line. Um, well, there's two figures released, which is Unmasked and the Alien Warrior. There is at least four figures in total of this wave, or this line as far as I know. Technically, if you want to get into variations, there is a couple more. So there's, say, a... Masked Wolf Predator, which will essentially be the same figure as this, I would imagine, just with the buyer mask. There is the uh, Pred Alien from the line, and I think there's a battle damage version of the Pred Alien as well. So there is kind of two variants if you want to consider them variants. And then there's the Xenomorph Warrior, the Wolf Predator, and Pred Alien. So technically, the main three kind of bad guys in the film, if you want to say, and you know, they're the main characters that you see in the film. I think there's a couple of other Predators that you see, like, early on in the start of the film. I th but I think, I don't know if they'll do those figures. I know they have done, Hyatoys did do some of the other Predators from the AVP line, as in, like, Ancient and Warrior and a few of the other ones. So they may do some of those Blink and You Miss kind of brief cameo Predators as well. So it is what it is but overall this figure is a really good figure and i do recommend picking this up now i got mine on big bad toy store um hopefully it's still available at the time of this recording i know it's only just been released maybe within the last month or so at the time of this recording so it hopefully should be available available for most nor most e-tailers and vendors that you pick up your stuff from so if you do like this figure go ahead and get it i know we've been waiting years for the NECA version of this figure the actual well it would be considered the 2.0 version of this figure NECA did do a version of this way back when the film was first released and it's very well they did a couple of versions of it and it was very limited in articulation as in like it had very limited it pose it was stuck in a certain pose and stuff like that but that's beside the point uh, this will tide us over if until the NECA one comes out, I suppose. But overall, it's a good figure. So I hope you enjoyed my ramblings about this figure. And I hope you enjoyed this video. If, as always, please uh, feel free to like, comment and subscribe to my channel. And I hope to get more content up for you soon. Cheers, guys.